Alright, so this tutorial is going to cover the insertion of some custom geometry that we've developed in Rhino, uh, in this instance specifically a door handle, so that we can actually develop some a uh, little bit more freedom in terms of the design here. Uh, it's important to note that when you guys are doing this, you cannot uh, modify the geometry, but this will give you a sensibility about how we can start to insert some of these things uh, for the symbol here. So we have our door that we've been working on here, and we have the door swing. Uh, if we go into uh, our 3D view, you can see that this is getting pretty well developed here. Right. And if we go back into plan, we can see that this is going to swing out. This is going to swing out. From there, so we're going to go ahead and put the door handle right there. And so what we're going to do is I'm I've gone ahead and done done some modeling in Rhino here. And so we're going to hopefully you guys, if you do this, spend a little more time developing this model. But um, this is going to work for what our purposes are going to do. And I'm going to show you guys how to do a little bit of quick rendering in, in uh, Revit as well. Okay, so we're going to take this, and I've you can either orient this in uh, Revit, or we can orient this in Rhino. Uh, it'd probably be faster if you orient it in Rhino. It's a lot faster to do that, but I'm going to show you guys how to do that anyways. So we can cover some more of the tools. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. And we're going to export this as a DWG. So we'll go ahead and call this handle. I've already done this. Hit save. Um, natural is fine, we'll hit OK, and it's going to ask you how much you want to polygon this, um, and so we can just set this somewhere reasonable, and the middle is fine probably, this isn't going to be incredibly complex. And then so what we'll do is, we'll be able to then go ahead and create a new family. So we're going to go uh, new family, and if we scroll down, we're going to create is a generic, generic model, sorry, uh, talk. And so then we get a list of crosshairs and we can start to develop some of uh, our own custom stuff. And so this is basically uh, the bare bones model here. From here we can go insert, I'm going to import CAD, find our file, and go ahead and you can see that that's been placed now. Uh, if we click, we can drag that in here. And I'm going to go ahead, uh, you probably want to model a little bit more, you can model the lock set and the backsplash and all of that. Uh, to go with this, that when you insert this actually can be uh, relatively intelligent. Uh, but from there, what we can do is we can go ahead and load this into the project. I'm actually cancel. I'm going to make sure that this gets oriented properly ahead of time. So we'll go into our elevation here, and we need to use our rotation tool. So rotate at 90 degrees. Put that into position. And these reference planes are going to be important when we actually go to try and align things down the road here. So we'll go ahead and get our front here. And you can see that this is now not right. And so we'll go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. All right, and we'll go ahead and just set that right there. All right, so now we should be looking at a relatively good guy. So we're ready to load this into the family. We'll load this into our door. And we're going to create a nested family here. And so we'll go ahead and just drop that guy in there. Select him. And rotate. Just type 90 here. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and position this appropriately. Okay, you can see that those reference lines are starting to track where we had our center line, where we had our center line, are starting to enable us to grab onto other pieces of geometry. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and I am going to create a reference plane. RP. And I'm going to dimension this from there to there. Create a parameter, and this is going to be instance type. Oh, well actually, we'll just leave it alone. So we'll go ahead and we'll call this uh, hardware distance. Okay, okay. So that's our hardware distance, and what we then can do is. I'm going to go ahead and align this, this with that 
reference line and lock that relationship. And then we can go ahead and start to modify this. So if we come in here and pull this up, our hardware distance, we can set that to three inches, hit apply. Oh, not three feet, three inches. Apply, you can see all that continues to move around in reference to that. Okay. So we'll take this guy and we can also likewise create a reference plane that goes across the, this guy. So we'll also so if we RP. And we'll go ahead and dimension this. Oh. Sorry. From there to there. one of these guys is going to be add parameter hardware offset okay. and then again we'll go ahead and we'll align this with that center line we'll lock that relationship and then I'm going to create a copy of this floating up in space. I'm going to create, adjust my hardware offset, set that to two inches, hit apply. Well, suffice to say, you guys will be able to actually modify this, but uh, yeah, I'll align this to that. And I'm assuming you guys are going to probably put something in here as well, so we'll do a better job than I'm doing showing you guys how to do this here. But essentially what we can, I'm trying to show you guys is we can start to set these constraints up so that these guys will start to align. And if we go into our 3D view, these things are going to be really low on the ground. And we'll go into our elevations here. Both of these guys move them up. And you can set that as a parameter if you guys so choose. Uh, we can go ahead and look at this in plan still. And so what we'll have is this is going to show up in plan, so we need to change the visibility graphics for this guy. So we hold control here for both of these guys, edit, and we'll go ahead and turn that off. So we hit OK. And let's load this guy into overwrite the existing. Okay, so now each one of these guys is in here, but if we go into 3D, we should see our door handles. And we can see that they've arrived. So you guys can really start to build this out in a little bit more robust way. But then what we can do is we can come in here and if we're going to let's go back, we can start to adjust some of the materials for our door here. Uh, and so we'll go into door, and if we select these guys, we can. So if we select both of these guys, we can go under the view, visibility graphics, 
in their imported categories, the default layer. Now this is an important thing to note. When you guys imported this stuff um, from Rhino, it actually maintained the layer that it was on and named that material, uh, sorry, the object by that layer. So anything in that layer is going to be associated with the same material. So just like we've been working with in Studio Max, um, the rules are going to be the same. So go ahead and open up the object styles. And from in here, we can start to change these things. So we can adjust the line color. We'll turn that to none. This is our, and then for material, we can open this up. And there's some rendering materials that we can come in here. And uh, we'll get a little bit more into this uh, down the road. But you can start to set these guys up and start to build out your materials in here. So as you guys get in here, you can open and close and import. Uh, let's open an existing. Uh, I don't have anything. Here. But here we can start to set materials. So if we come in here, we can go ahead, hit OK, hit Apply, hit OK, hit OK, and then we can load this back into the tester. Overwrite the existing version. Go into 3D. We can turn on the sun here. And save that. And that'll sometimes it'll prompt you and you just hit OK. We can go ahead and get, zoom in in here, and then we can from there we can go under the view render. So it'll pull up the rendering guy. And so you can set the, it'll just be initially set to draft, but we'll set it to medium. Then we can hit render. We'll do a quick analysis here. And it'll render that out based on our guy here. Okay. So you guys can start to, as you guys start to apply things, materials, and play around with this. You can render more of this stuff out. And just a sense of how this is starting to work. And you can see that this is floating. You're going to have to model more of the hardware, but uh, for this purpose, you guys understand what we're doing. Now, note that this is not parametric. We can the model is moving around parametrically, but we can't really do much uh, beyond that at this point.